cookies up here? I don't know if you want all this cheese. Yeah, we have the four digits. Both sides. Both sides. No, just this side. That's why should be funny.
to our mass and transfer our celebrant this evening is Bishop Paris. Please rise. Our opening song is number 432 in the music issue How Great Thou Art, number 432.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. On this, this solemnity of the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ to heaven, we pray for the soul of a great churchman, a man of great charity, a auxiliary bishop, a priest, a seminary rector, a biblical professor, a pastor, and a man of incredible charity and humility, Bishop Abel Sella. We pray for his soul today. Uh, it's so wonderful to be with his dear nieces who bring the greetings and the prayers of their, the entire uh, Sella family. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. I'm sorry,
let us pray. Gladden us with holy joys, almighty God, and make us rejoice with devout thanksgiving for the ascension of Christ, your Son, is our exaltation. Where the head has gone before in glory, the body is called to follow in hope. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day he was taken up. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen, he presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he had suffered and appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait, as in his words, for the promise of the Father about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He answered them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons that the Father has established by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, Samaria to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The word of the Lord. Thank you. 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, may the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation resulting in knowledge of him. May the eyes of your hearts be enlightened that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call what are the riches of glory in his inheritance among his holy ones, and what is the surpassing greatness of his power for all of us who believe. In accord with the exercise of his great might, which he worked in Christ, raising him from the dead and seating him at his right hand in the heavens, far above every principality, authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he puts all things beneath his feet and gives him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And with a reading from the conclusion of the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are the witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, raised his hands, and blessed them. And he blessed them. As he blessed them, he parted from them and was taken up to heaven. 
they did him homage and then returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple praising God. The Gospel of the Lord. Bishop Barras, Bishop Dunn, Bishop Henning, Bishop Romero, Bishop Andre, we welcome you to our parish. We thank you for being here. For those who don't know who they are, they are bishops of our diocese. Bishop Barras is the ordinary. Uh, Bishop Dunn was consecrated bishop at the same time with Bishop Sauer. And they're great friends. Uh, I had the privilege of sharing meals with them and plays with them over the course of the years. Um, and Bishop Henning removed every single obstacle the past two months to get the proper and quick care for Bishop Sello. So I thank you immensely for that. <laughs> and as a secret that wasn't known until we got here, Bishop Barris came out here last year on Bishop Seller's 90th birthday to take us out to dinner to the best restaurant in town. And thank you for that. Okay. He also called, I think he called me and not him, but he called me about maybe 10 times over the past five years saying, we'll send the car, we'll pick him up, bring him to our center. And Bishop Seller kept saying, no, I've had enough. <laughs> you know. But the offer was made so often for that to happen. Um, I also want to take this time to thank all the people who helped out, uh, the people who decorated the front lobby, uh, the ushers, the people who bought food, set up for that. Uh, so many people did so much stuff. And I'm not going to say your names. I'm just going to say thank you very much. And for the music groups, to getting together again to sing this day. So to thank you all. I was shocked when I got a phone call asking me to give the homily. <laughs> Uh, but I'm going to ask you a question, and those who are in this parish should know it because I say it a lot. I am the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham. Okay. The covenant, the covenant theme that runs through the whole scriptures. I will never forget it because, A, I believe in it. I believe in it strongly. I preach about it all the time. But secondly, in the end of my second year, we were allowed to take the comps, the comprehensives. And one of the questions was, trace the theme of covenant, particular attention paid to the major prophets. And I did. And lo and behold, I failed. <laughs> so I went up to Bishop Sell and I said, uh, Emil, uh, was the question that I answered wrong? He said, no, your answer was perfect, but you put no dates in. I said, dates, it's not history, it's scripture. He goes, no, dates are important in scripture to know the chronological order. He says, yeah, but I had in chronological order. You need dates. So lo and behold, 30-some-odd uh, years later, I'm assigned here. I didn't know he was here, but I was assigned here. I came here, and I met him, and I said, Emil, I don't remember, but I still don't know the dates of the prophets. <laughs> We are very different. But I brought that thing up about the covenant and the scripture because I'm not going to do what is normally done. Bishop Sell and I were very different. Okay. He was highly intellectual, intelligent, had degrees. I just have one. Okay. He spoke a few languages. I barely speak English well. I'm a mess. He was organized. But the thing we both agreed on very strongly is whenever we went to priest funerals together, I drove him a lot, we come back and he say, I wish they would talk about the scriptures and not just talk about the person. So I'm going to talk about the scriptures tonight. The covenant. God's relationship with God's people. And when I say God, I mean Father, Son, Spirit. That is the covenant. 
and Christ fulfilled the covenant on the cross, and the apostles proclaimed that as they went around. And they were witnesses of Christ's life, death, and resurrection. But they were also witnesses of the covenant. And we hear that today in our scriptures. Okay, the Acts of the Apostles. Witnesses to go out to all the world. Witnesses of the covenant, but witnesses of God's love revealed in the death of Christ and proven by the resurrection and energized by the power of the Spirit. That's what they went out and gave witness to. In the gospel story, the Feast of the Ascension, the apostles see Christ removed from their sight. And he tells them, stay in the city. And basically, they kind of didn't listen. They went about and started preaching already. Because even though it wasn't Pentecost yet, you can't separate Father, Son, Spirit. The Spirit was already with them, and they were out there proclaiming, witnessing, giving glory to God. That idea was Bishop Seller's life. He knew the Scripture better than anybody I know. He lived the Scriptures. And Tom, raise your hand, Tom. Right next to you, young lady, raise your hand. That's where Bishop Seller sat every day, except Sunday, Every day, about 40 minutes or so before Mass, until about two years ago when he started getting tired, he would do it after Mass. He would sit there and pray. Immersing himself in the God he knew from his love of the Scriptures and from the love of his prayer. And he revealed he was a witness to the love of God by his whole life. A witness by deeply discovering the mysteries, the truth, the beauty of the Scripture, and revealing it to all of us. I don't know how many of you were taught by him. Okay? Most of us were taught classes by him. And two of the most important classes that he taught were electives, believe it or not. You didn't have to take it. Who took his electives on Psalms? Just me? <laughs> <laughs> Who took his elective on centering prayer? My gosh. I believed that if you're paying for something, get as much as you can. So it was like free classes you weren't paying for. Uh, but centering prayer, which he did all the time, and the Psalms, which we pray every day, are two of the most useful things that he taught me, and maybe some other guys, because there were at least 20 guys in those classes. And he taught them because he lived them. He prayed them every day, and you could see it. His motto, which is out there, grace and peace, it's the apostolic greeting that St. Paul writes in all his letters, and two of the books that Bishop Seller wrote, or three of them actually, were on St. Paul, grace and peace. Whenever he was present, you could tell he was a man of grace, a man of humble grace, and service, and a man who believed in peace, in reconciliation, in healing, believed in it strongly, and you could feel it in his presence. Some people were surprised when they saw us on Facebook and YouTube. How many watched us dancing? Okay. okay. Now, that was his idea, because I am not as technological advanced as he was. I don't use PowerPoint. I don't use Photoshop. I don't use any of that stuff. I use Word. And I even tell the diocese, if you don't send it to me in Word, I'm not going to use it. Okay? But he did all that stuff. And he wrote some of those songs that we sung, uh, and he enjoyed it. He really got into it. Um, and the people loved it. He never did one of the cooking shows, though. I think that wasn't his strong point. <laughs> but during the pandemic, I was blessed. And he, I guess, was blessed, too, because one of the songs he wrote was 
going to wash that man right on my hand. Remember that? With the broom. Well, he was saying, me, me and my shadow, get away from me. And he started by saying, this is what two celibate men do living together in the pandemic. <laughs> but that's not what he did. He revealed the love of God by going out into the community at 88, 89 years old, visiting the sick, bringing communion to those who couldn't get out of their homes. And I said, Amo, I'll go. No, no, I'll go. Because he believed in serving the people of God as best he could to reveal the covenant love of God. And if you think about it, I don't know how theologically correct I'm going to be with this one. But we were taught that the whole mystery of Christ's life is basically one mystery. Christ comes to reveal the love of God in his birth, his mission, his death, his resurrection, his ascension. And then Pentecost cements that for the world to see. And if you think about it, what about your life? You were baptized, filled with the gift of the Spirit. But Christ was present at that moment, as was God the Father. You received the gift of the Eucharist. Christ was truly present at that moment. But so was the Father and the Spirit who helped us to consecrate that bread and wine. The Spirit filled us at confirmation as one of the bishops confirmed us. But Christ was there as we became his disciples in a fuller sense, and God the Father was guiding us. The God of the covenant that was essential to Bishop Seller's life was a part of our life all throughout. And it is not completed until we do what the apostles did. Give witness to it. Give witness to it. So I'd ask you to think about that. So far in your life, how have you given witness to the covenant love of God? And how are you going to continue to do that? I usually will read some magazines, occasionally I'll read a small book. Every day, Bishop Seller was reading three books by his nightstand or table. You're sometimes out on the bench here where you fall asleep. Okay, until the bell rang. He would always be reading something on Scripture and sometimes writing something and sending it into magazines. He would always be reading something else on theology, inspirational, and he would also be reading something, a fiction, a novel, a biography, or history. Always. And somehow all of that made way into his heart, his mind, and his homilies. He was always up to date on what was going on. A man, and you can read the stuff in the back and the sides in the newspaper. You know who he was. That's why you're here, to celebrate his life. One of the things that amazed me, and I don't see it that often, is that a bunch of the men in this parish, many of them were the old-time farmers, 85, 87, 90, a bunch of them cried, cried, when they heard that Bishop Seller died, because they truly loved him. You don't hear men saying that too much, but they did. Because he revealed the love of the covenant of God. Maybe sometime this week you can go back into Exodus, the prophet Jeremiah, prophet Elijah, and read about the covenant. It's about a dozen times at least where Somewhere in Scripture, it says, I am the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay. Because that's what God wants us to know, his covenant love. And we find many, many ways not to understand that. But that's all that Scripture is about. It's all our life is about, the covenant love of God. And we could have had no better teacher of that by his studies, 
his teaching, his charity, his priesthood, his everyday living. I want to thank Regina, Diane, uh, the rest of your family, you can tell them, uh, because as all of us know as priests, many times we don't do stuff with our families because we're doing our ministry. Uh, and he loved his family. He loved, in fact, one of the things he did that I also did is he used to crawl on the floor at the little kids. Uh, he got too old to do it when I got here, but he, was, he used to do that, crawling on the floor on their level. It's so important to do that, particularly in this day and age. Children need to know that they can be hugged, appreciated okay, on their level. And he just did it normally, didn't make any bones about it. Simple, everyday human life. Prayer. When I was in the seminary my first year, Anybody here might remember that? I don't know. I hated morning prayer. Hated it. I didn't like to get up early. I still don't. And I also didn't like the way that people prayed in the seminary. Half was on that side, half was on that side, and it went back and forth, back and forth. And it was like sort of a rush because breakfast was after that. And after... We had a meeting with the rector every year. The first meeting, uh, Bishop Sellers says to me, he was a monsignor at that point. He goes, uh, Larry, uh, the brothers tell me that you're not at morning prayer too much. I says, you're right, I'm not. He goes, why not? He says, I can't pray that way. Uh, I like to pray quietly, um, meditatively. He goes, so do I. I says, oh, then we're in agreement. He says, no, you need to be at morning prayer. I says, but I can't pray there like that way. He goes, no, no, you don't understand. Your presence is a prayer for the other men who need to see you there. So I kind of agreed with him, and I went. Okay. But he didn't make me go. He invited me. He was a great mentor, a wonderful priest, and a really good friend, a really good friend. Uh, I will miss him as all of us will miss him. We'll miss his advice, his wisdom. But I think most of all, we will miss his everyday prayerful, grace-filled, and peace-filled presence. I'd like to also at this time thank, who's watching, um, a friend of his, uh, Bishop uh, Richard Skilber from Milwaukee. For many, many years, they went together to all the conferences for the biblical conference and they would also vacation up in Maine somewhere. Um, uh, I spoke with uh, Richard, and he uh, ain't feeling so great. So he couldn't come, but he extends his blessings upon all of us and upon the community. So as we continue to celebrate tonight, please take with you a deeper love of the covenant of our God. And please bring with you unto others the grace and the peace of our God. Thank you. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, substantial with the Father. To him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life for the world to come. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, filled with paschal joy, let us pray more earnestly to God that he who graciously listened to the prayers and supplications of his beloved Son may now be pleased to look upon us in our lowliness. Our prayer response is, Christ Jesus, send us your spirit. Christ Jesus, we celebrate your victory over sin and death. May the power of the Spirit safeguard our lives in your grace and peace. We pray, Christ Jesus, send us your spirit. Beloved of God, you have ascended into the heavenly temple. Fill us with the riches of your spirit that we may offer you fitting praise and carry on your mission of mercy to all peoples. We pray, Christ Jesus, send us your spirit. Word of life, you have given full authority over the new creation. Recreate us in your own spirit that we may hasten the reign of enduring peace. We pray. For the intention of this Mass, Bishop Emil Sella, we pray. May those who are sick, disabled, struggling with addiction, or those close to death know that Christ is there with them. We pray. May all those who have been killed in the recent shootings find peace with God. May their families discover the comforting love of our Blessed Mother, and may society find a way to end the senseless violence that has plagued our country. We pray. O oh God, who know that our life in this present age is subject to suffering and need, Hear the desires of those who cry to you. Receive the prayers of those who believe in you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. We offer a sacrifice now in supplication, O Lord, to honor the wondrous ascension of your Son. Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange, we too may rise up to the heavenly realms, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight, that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and give you thanks. He said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, that as we look forward to a second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, 
by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John the Evangelist and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, my assistant bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. And remember your servant, Bishop Emil, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, the kingdom of the power and glory of the Lord, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace to you. Peace to you. Peace to you. Peace
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who allow those on earth to celebrate divine mysteries, grant, we pray, that Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Regina and Diane, and to all of us here today in the diocese and throughout the Diocese of Rockville Center, I have a letter uh, from Cardinal Pietro Parolin, the Secretary of State, and it's a letter expressing our Holy Father, Pope Francis's prayers and sympathy to you, uh, Regina and Diane, and to the whole church in the Diocese of Rockville Center and the Universal Church. To the most reverend John O. Barris, Bishop of Rockville Center, having learned with sadness of the death of former auxiliary bishop, Emil A. Sella, His Holiness Pope Francis offers heartfelt condolences to you and to the clergy, religious, and lay faithful of the diocese, recalling with gratitude the late bishop's many years of priestly and Episcopal ministry to the church in Rockville Center his love for sacred scripture and care for the formation of the clergy. His Holiness joins you in commending his soul to the merciful love of Christ the Good Shepherd, to those present at the Mass of Christian burial, and to all who mourn Bishop Sella in the sure hope of the resurrection. The Holy Father, Pope Francis, cordially imparts his blessing as a pledge of peace and consolation in the Lord. Cardinal Pietro Parolin, Secretary of State. With our brother bishops who were so close to Bishop Amel, with this incredible group of priests from the Diocese of Rockville Center, so many of whom had Bishop Amel as their rector and as Father Larry said so beautifully, their uh, professor of sacred scripture. And with all of our wonderful lay faithful, we offer you our prayers and our sympathy and to the entire uh, Sella family. Bishop Sella, uh, I'm very grateful to Father Larry Dunkley uh, for being such an incredible brother. They were incredible brothers in the rectory here at St. John the Evangelist. And it was mutually very enriching. And Father Larry, I want to thank you for the beautiful homily, if I can find Father Larry. (laughs) I want to thank you for the beautiful homily, and especially your fraternal... (laughs) And especially your fraternal care, day in, day out of one great bishop. You were great fraternal brothers, and you model it for all of us. Thank you, Father Larry. (laughs) Regina and Diane, one of the things, as we pray for Bishop Amel's soul, both this evening and tomorrow at the funeral mass, we, we think about the different what Bishop Amel would want from us. Certainly he would want us to pray for vocations to the priesthood in the Diocese of Rockville Center. A big harvest, a rich harvest of vocations to the priesthood. And might I add that this great biblical scholar who was friends with Father John Meyer, Father Raymond Brown, and generations of biblical scholars and had such a brilliance for the sacred scripture could could bring it to life for the ordinary lay people here in Easter Long Island and in his beautiful Bible studies might be the tribute be that all of us here together tonight in honor of Bishop Sella live Psalm 119 in a deeper way. May the word of God be a light and a lamp for our steps on earth. He was a great man of the sacred scriptures. 
he had that attention to detail, those biblical languages, that study in Rome. And he not only was a great scholar and a great pastoral agent of the sacred scriptures, he also translated it into his daily life as a bishop, a servant, and a pastor. Damos gracias por la presencia de la comunidad hispana esta noche. Muchas, muchas gracias. Monsignor Emil Sella estaba un gran amigo de la comunidad hispana aquí a San Juan Evangelista, ¿vero? Sí. Muchas, muchas gracias por el testimonio de esta comunidad. Sabemos bien que... Monseñor Sela estaba un hombre de caridad, un obispo de caridad, un servidor de caridad, y también un, un hombre de la, de la Biblia, un obispo de la Biblia. Podemos, en respeto por Monseñor Sela, podemos renovar nuestro amor por la palabra de Dios en nuestra comunidad vibrante de la comunidad hispana aquí en San Juan Evangelista y la comunidad grande aquí en Long Island. Muchas, muchas gracias por la presencia de la comunidad hispana vibrante aquí esta noche. Gracias. Before the final blessing and dismissal, just a reminder, you're all welcome to go, not next door, but the building after next door, which is the former school building, it's the Paris Center. There's refreshments and stuff there. And you can talk to each other and t tell stories about Bishop Seller. You might know something that they don't know and might have fun doing that. And for all who are going to the funeral tomorrow morning, I encourage you to come here and carpool because it makes it easier to park over there and you might meet someone and you can talk scripture on the way there and back. Thank you. <laughs> Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Yeah. 